Okay, welcome to uh, Knot Theory class number three, I believe it is. Um, so the goal for today is to quickly review the Jones polynomial and do a little bit that we forgot to do last hour, we didn't have time to do last time, and then uh, implement it. Uh, because I think it's valuable to see how these things are working. And there is actually some things to learn in it too, some math as well. So let me remind you, we've defined a Kaufman bracket. Oh, sorry, let me switch to the other camera. Where's the mouse? Here. Uh, I'm sorry about that, I should have done it before. Okay, good. So, um, we've defined the Kaufman bracket by saying that a crossing becomes a linear combination of A times a zero smoothing times B times a one smoothing, and I will not repeat the definitions. And we said that a, a DK disjoint circle, cycles, which are not interacting, not crossing each other, becomes D to the power K. And then we tried to make it invariant under Reitermeister 2 and 3, and we, find, we found that in order to do that, B has to be equal to A inverse, so here I already wrote A inverse, and D has to be equal to negative A squared, negative A to the minus 2, so here I wrote negative A squared, negative to the A to the minus 2 to the power K, and once you do that, it's invariant under Reitermeister 2 and other, under Reitermeister 3. So it's almost a not invariant, but not quite, because we checked that if you um, evaluate the Kaufman bracket on the positive kink, by the way, this is called the positive kink, because the crossing here in the middle is positive. Uh, you get negative a cubed times uh, if you don't have the kink, and if you evaluate the bracket on a negative kink, you get negative a to the neg negative 3 uh, times whatever you have without the bracket. So we were looking for an invariant, that, or not an invariant, a quantity that has the opposite uh, behavior, and we define the right of a knot diagram to be uh, the sum of all the signs of all the crossings in the diagram, where the sign of a crossing is either positive or negative, depending on some right-hand rule, which I will not repeat. And then we checked that the right is invariant under Reitermeister 2 and Reitermeister 3, and maybe you can see that I switched to blue, because blue is where new stuff begins, so we did not quite check, but it's completely trivial, that the right of a positive crossing is, well, again, this is within a context. This is a, a, a kink, sorry, the right of a positive kink. So this is a kink within a bigger knot. So the right of this uh, big knot with a positive kink in it is one plus the right of the knot that you get if you remove the kink. Why? Because all you do, I mean, this kink simply adds a plus one to the sum of signs. And similarly, the right of a, a knot with a negative kink in it will be the right of the knot with that kink removed minus one. Okay? So, uh, it sort of has the opposite behavior, or not quite, but seem nearly the opposite be behavior of the Kaufman bracket, or maybe the same behavior as the Kaufman bracket, uh, namely, it's invariant under Reitermeister 2 and 3, and not invariant under, right, uh, ra under Reitermeister 1, but in a way that is kind of easy to control, that's easy, easy to measure. But this implies that if you look at the Kaufman bracket, and you multiply it by uh, negative a cubed to the negative derive, then every time you add a positive kink, then on the one hand, this factor gets divided by negative a cubed. 
because you've added one to the right and it's, it's with negative power. On the other hand, the bracket gets multiplied by negative a cubed. So the overall quantity does not change if you add a positive kink. And similarly, if you add a negative kink, uh, nothing changes. Okay? So if you want an invariant, you just multiply negative a cubed to the negative derived with the bracket. And that's a perfectly legitimate invariant, it's perfectly good, but then you massage it a little bit more just to agree with standard conventions. So uh, it turns out that this is always divisible by d. So you just divide it by d and, and have a fewer, a little bit fewer factors, a little bit simpler answer. So by the way, uh, maybe I'll add it here with a little question mark in red. So the red means uh, look it up, okay? Is it really always divisible by d or am I lying to you? Okay? And, find a, and, and then the last thing that you do is you apply the substitution, so this is an inv a polynomial or a rational function because I divided by, 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 by d, but it turns out to be a Laurent polynomial in the variable a, but it turns out that it always depends only on a to the power fourth, and to agree with standard convention, you make standard conventions, you make the substitution a goes to q to the power negative one over four, and then the result is a polynomial in a variable q, and it's kind of uh, not wasteful. There is no easy substitution that makes it a simpler polynomial in general, okay? So, in fact, let me add another question mark here. So, the question mark here means, please verify, convince yourself that on a, um, uh, a, a, a knot, this is always... Uh, uh, it gives you a rational function, a, a Laurent polynomial in Q. So, in other words, all the powers of A are multiples of 4. Anyway, that quantity that we just got is called the Jones polynomial in K, of K, and it's super famous. You know, it, uh, well, I mean, it, it revolutionized knot theory when, when it was found in around uh, 82 or so, and then Jones uh, got a Fields Medal for it, uh, and um, though Jones' route for discovering it was different than what I've shown, and I think I already shared with you the, the sad news that Jones uh, passed away uh, about a week ago. Okay. Anyway, um, here is, uh, very briefly, I want to describe a... a a different way to um, compute the Jones polynomial, okay? And the way is maybe called by using the jones skein relation. So first, met, let me derive the jones skein relation. So, if you compute the Jones polynomial of an overcrossing, I am being loose here. The Jones polynomial of an overcrossing, there is no such thing. There is the Jones polynomial of a knot. But as always, what I will mean is the Jones polynomial of some knot which contains an overcrossing, and I'm concentrating, I'm drawing only the overcrossing, and my assumption is that this is somehow continued to be a knot or in fact, a, a link, a knot with several components. Okay, then, first, so, but, but let me cons concentrate only on the contribution that comes from that double point, sorry, from that overcrossing. So, we got a contribution to the right, the contribution to the right is plus one, so, um, you get 
uh, negative a cubed raised to the power minus the right, and, uh, oh my god, uh, why did I write here, uh, uh, three quarters instead of negative three quarters? Did I blunder? Oh no, I did not blunder, because the substitution is uh, a goes to q to the negative one-fourth. Okay? Sorry. So this is, this is what becomes of the a cubed term. Okay? And then I get a times a zero smoothing. And really, I should not have used the bracket here. I should have used uh, the Jones polynomial. So here... I really mean uh, the uh, uh, Jones polynomial, so in, uh, uh, of the zero smoothing and also the Jones polynomial of the uh, sorry the, the zero smoothing and the one smoothing, meaning also include all the right contribution from the complement. Uh, so you get that J of an overcrossing is equal to this. <coughs> Likewise, J of an undercrossing contributes a contribution like this, and again, replace the brackets by Jones polynomials. But now, uh, if you look at uh, these... Uh, nope. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm sorry. If you look at... Well, actually, it got highlighted anyway. So, if, if you look at these two terms... Uh, they are the same except with different powers of Q multiplying them. So, if you look at Q inverse times the Jones of an overcrossing and subtra subtract Q times the Jones of an undercrossing, then these two terms kill each other and you are left with two terms which are j of a, of a smoothing with some coefficient. And when you work out the coefficient, they come out q to the one-half minus q to the minus one-half. Okay? So, q inverse times, times j of an overcrossing minus q times j of an undercrossing is equal to, or q inverse times j of a positive crossing minus q times j of a negative crossing is equal to q to the one-half minus q to the minus one-half times j of a smoothing. Now, um, why should you care? Because that's an alternative way of computing the Jones polynomial. I will not show an example, but I will uh, uh, explain why it's an alternative way. So basically, um, um, uh, every knot can be undone by flipping crossings to un by, by flipping over crossings to under crossings, or the other way around. Right? If you have a, a, a knot, you can always undo it by flip flipping crossings. Furthermore, you can even uh, and do it in place, right? Of course, if you can flip crossings, you can undo the knot, but, but you can do it in place. So if you have a, uh, say, a trefoil knot, but, but it's true for any knot, you can undo it by only flipping crossings without uh, moving anything else in the projection. Why is this so? This is so because you can choose a beginning point and try to make your knot descending. Meaning, you can try to make it so that it goes downward everywhere you... everywhere. So, it goes... basically, the first time 
it passes through it across a crossing it passes as the upper strand and then the second time it passes as an under strand so for example if you do it for the trefoil so I start here and I uh, 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 make it descending so it is descending 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 and now Descending means the next time it goes here, it goes under, and then it goes under and under, and this is a descending uh, projection. Basically, it looks like if you start at the base point, you go under, 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 except the, the beginning point itself, you, you must jump up again, but you don't see it in, the, in, in this projection. Okay? Now, a descending knot is obviously... Uh, unknotted or a descending knot diagram is obviously uh, unknotted right because basically you can slide everything right you you can uh, draw a circle here and then slide every point uh, on the uh, knot to some point, the corresponding point on, on the circle, and nothing ever intersects anything else because these points are at different heights. So you can make a note descending without moving, sorry, so you can make, so you can untie every note without moving it if you are just allowed to flip crossings. And now, the skein relation tells you what is the cost to flip a crossing. If you flip a crossing, you're changing it either from an overcrossing to an undercrossing or from an undercrossing to an, to an overcrossing. But anyway, the difference between the two with some factors is, is given by uh, uh, a smoothing, the, the, the knot that you get by smoothing a crossing. But the knot that you get by smoothing a crossing is going to have one crossing less. Okay? So basically you can reduce this to the A knot and there is a price to pay and the price is the Jones invariant of some knots with one crossing less. Or in fact links. But then you can reduce these links to the unknot, to the unlink, to, to disjoint circles, again by the same process, and the price will be uh, Jones polynomials of links with two fewer crossings. And then you can keep going, and eventually you can rewrite the Jones polynomial of every knot using the skein relation a sum combination of uh, the Jones polynomials of uh, unknots or of links that are equivalent to the unlink to to k disjoint circles. So, uh, uh, so, 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 in fact, to complete the computation using this way, all I have to do is to base the induction and tell you what is the Jones polynomial of the unlink with k components. But this is, but this we already know, I mean, so, so really you need the skein relation and uh, this additional relation. So what does this come out to be? I believe it comes out to be uh, um, negative q to the one half, uh, negative q to the negative one half, uh, to the power k in our conventions. Okay? Good. Wait, did I use the right conventions? Uh, yeah, I did. Good. Um, any questions? Any comments? Yeah, um, could you just make uh, it a bit clear about what the descending note is again? So, a descending knot is a knot such that you can pick a point and if you walk, well, 
when embedded in three dimensions, if you start walking from this point, you're always walking downwards. So, I mean, it's downwards into the board, so you cannot see. The projection remains the same, but, but uh, you know, uh, I'll start here. You know, I walk, but I always walk towards the knot. So if you look from the side, so now if this now is the plane of the blackboard, of the whiteboard, then I start here, and as I walk, I always move away from that plane. I always descend. In practice, what it means is that every time you, well, I mean, you, you end up passing through each crossing twice. Right? And every time you pass through a crossing, so, so the first time you pass through a crossing, you're at a higher level than the second time. So the first time you pass through a crossing, you pass through it as the overstrand, and the second time you pass through a crossing, you pass through it as an under, understrand. So, like in the picture. So I started here, I went this way, so the first time I go through this crossing, I'm over, the second time, sorry, now it's another crossing, again, I'm over, I'm over, and then the second time through each crossing, I'm going under. Okay? That's a descending knot. Good. So, I want to switch gears and help you or write together with you a quick computer program to compute the Jones polynomial. And there is a point, the point, well, there is mathematics in it, but I also want to emphasize the fact that the things that we're talking about are not, and none of the things, that, or hardly any of the things that we will talk about are completely theoretical. There is always an actual computation that one can do somewhere. So, I want to tell you how to write a computer program to compute the Jones polynomial, uh, but the first thing I have to tell you is how to input a knot into the computer. And there are a dozen conventions, and uh, since I don't know which one to choose, I'll choose one, okay? And the one I like the most is the PD notation, or, uh, sorry, uh, I misspelled, so PD uh, notation. But again, there are a dozen other conventions, and they're all uh, eventually equivalent. Or, you know, you, not, not equivalent, but you can all, it's easy to go from any one to any other one. Okay? So, best is to describe it by an example. Okay? So, uh, and the only note that I know how to draw without getting confused is the trefoil. So, the only example you will ever see is, or hard, almost the only example you will ever see will be the trefoil knot. So, uh, Okay, what's the PD notation? Well, you choose some edge of the diagram and call it first. By the way, when I was talking about um, um, uh, not colorings, I was talking about arcs. So, an arc goes from the beginning, basically is not, does not, well, gets cut only when the drawing gets cut. So this is an arc in red. But now I want to look at edges. An edge just goes from a crossing to another crossing. So this is an edge and this is an edge. So every arc is made of several edges. Okay? So now, uh, since I messed up the picture, let me draw it again. So here is the trefoil. And I choose an edge, and I call it number one. So let's say this is number one, and then I start walking in the direction of uh, the, the, the knot, and I call the edges, and I number the edges. So this will be number two, number three, number four, from here to here, number five, and number six, and in principle I could get to a large number. Okay? And then 
uh, I, uh, I uh, simply list the crossings. So, uh, and how do I list the crossing? So, every crossing, uh, ha the rule is that, uh, first of all, every crossing has four numbers surrounding it. So let's call them I, J, K, and L. And then I look for the incoming understrand. So the incoming understrand is down here. Sorry, I, I, uh, I failed to indicate the orientations. With the current, with these orientations, I look for the incoming understrand and I simply list the numbers around it in order. So this will go to x, x for crossing, and then subscript i, j, k, l. So for the trefoil, I will end up getting three crossings. So let's see, this one, so maybe I'll number them. Um, uh, uh, this is a crossing one, this is crossing two, and this is crossing three. And then if I list them in this order, uh, I will get, so crossing number one will be an X um, uh, sub. Uh, so uh, the orientation, I should have indicated, the orient so the orientation goes like this this way, this way, and this way. So the incoming understrand here is number three, and then I go counterclockwise. So three, one, four, six. Nearly pi, by chance. Uh, the second crossing will be, so this one will be x, one, five, two, four. One, five, two, four. So, uh, again, I'm start at the incoming understrand and go counterclockwise, so I get one, five, two, four. And the last one will be um, x, um, uh, five, three, six, two. Okay? And let me decorate this with a little more. You don't really need to do it, but it's kind of useful to decorate it a little bit more. So uh, I will add a, a, a sign over here, depending on whether the crossing is positive or negative. You can actually read it off from this information, but it's, it's a bit easier if you, if you don't have to. So, um, this crossing right here is positive, and in fact all of them are positive, so all of them have a plus on them. Okay? And now, um, this is uh, my notation for a knot. So, uh, exercise for you. Some of these exercises will stay as just exercise, as just words, I hereby ask you an exercise, and some of them uh, will become um, uh, homework assignments, okay? But anyway, here is an exercise. So exercise, this doesn't quite determine the knot, but it determines the knot, or sorry, it doesn't quite determine a knot diagram, but it determines it as, an, as a diagram on the sphere. So uh, this uh, list of uh, crossing information, info, uh, determines... The ach, I wish I could spell. Wouldn't it be, uh, wouldn't it make my life as a mathematician so much easier if I could spell with my mis without mis mistakes? Anyway, uh, determines D as a diagram on S2. 
So maybe I should just explain uh, what does it mean as a diagram on S2. So uh, let's start again with the trefoil. So this is a diagram written in the plane, right? But the plane is just a point, uh, sorry, is S2 with a point at infinity removed. So uh, saying that, I mean, okay, as a diagram in the sphere, this diagram is equivalent to the diagram that you get by taking any one of it, the or any one of the outer edges of it, so this one or that one or that one, and passing it through infinity and have it, it have it come back from the other side. So uh, uh, let me show you what you get. So this diagram is equivalent to what you get by taking one of the external edges and passing it through infinity and uh, getting it uh, and have it return on the other side. So I took this edge and I'll take this interval and I'll make it larger and then pass through infinity and it will come and it will come back from the other side so it will look like this and uh, uh, this diagram and that diagram are equivalent on S2, but not on R2. On the other hand, I clearly didn't change the crossing information, so it has the same, so these two diagrams have the same P denotation. And I claim that this is the only thing that can happen. So the diagram is determined by its, uh, or almost determined by its, S, by its P denotation. Okay, let's implement it. Uh, here is the bad news. Uh, I need to switch to a computer program and I'm not going to remember uh, this information. I wonder if I should be fancy and... Uh, you know what? Yeah, let me be fancy. So bear, me, bear with me. Uh, I will... Uh, uh, I will, um, uh, I will copy paste it into the other program, at least I will try. So, uh, I think I am failing, maybe I, I was, you know what, I was too fancy. Uh, no, I do want to do it, I'm sorry. Uh, so let me try again. Uh, okay. Uh, no, sorry, the screen capture is not working well. Uh, you know what? Let me try. Well, okay. Can somebody take a note of this and then read it to me? Just read out the sequences of numbers. I've got a note of that. Oh, excellent. Good. So now let me switch to the uh, implementation. And uh, uh, so I'm writing in Mathematica. Um, and uh, here is an example. Part of the reason for the example is to check that you can see it. Can you see? Okay. Actually, uh, Let's see if Mathematica will compute it right the second time. Where is my mouse? Oh, here. Sorry. So uh, let me uh, hit enter. Yeah, it computes it now. Compute it, computes it right. So now uh, let me um, uh, give a name. So let me declare that K is uh, a name for this is what I will call the knot, and K will be a PD notation. It's, it's a symbol I've just invented. I could have equally well uh, have called it anyone, anything else, okay? But I call it PD, and now um, I have the three crossings. So let me indicate positive crossings by XPs, 
and negative crossings by xm's. Okay, so x positive and x, x plus and x minus. Uh, now, for the trefoil, we only had positive crossings. So, I have xp and then it was 3, 1, 5, 6. Right? And then whoever took notes, what was the second one? Uh, it's 3, 1, 4, 6. I believe. Ah, you're right. It's pi. Yes. You know, I remembered it was pi. I just didn't remember what pi was. Okay, the se or maybe I just made a silly mistake. Anyway, the second one is? 1, 5, 2, 4. 1, 5, 2, 4. The third one is? 5, 3, 6, 2. Uh, 5, 3, 6, 2. Okay. Yeah. Now... You want to write XP. Oh, you are right. It should have been an XP. Uh, why isn't it... Okay. Uh, XP. Right. So now I'm evaluating it. My compu the computer is returning the same thing. This value has been set into K, so if I ask it to print K, that k. Unfortunately, uh, this isn't a, 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 well, I still have to compute something. So the next thing to do is to apply the rule. So let me call t1, so temporary result number one, uh, will be uh, um, k to which I apply the rule, and uh, I am taking the rule uh, from, uh, let me show you where I'm taking it, I am uh, taking it from, uh, say, uh, here. So, a positive crossing becomes negative q to the you know what let me just let me just compute the Kaufman bracket and, and worry about the signs later okay so uh, a positive cross or a crossing becomes a times the zero smoothing plus a inverse times the one smoothing so um, let's uh, see what uh, this means in a PD notation so, uh, basically, I should take uh, a thing like this and convert it, so this now has I, J, K, and L, and convert it to A times, well, a line, a, a smoothing, plus A inverse times the other smoothing, and uh, this, uh, um, um, so, so here the indices will be I, J, K, and L, and here they will also be I, J, K, and L, but you see, before I and K were distinct edges, but after, or sorry, before I and J were distinct edges. But after I smooth, they become the same edge. So, but I want them to remain distinct. I want to re still retain the, 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 old, the old names for the edges. So what I'll do, I'll introduce a vertex in the middle of every um, edge. And now, these are distinct edges that are connected by vertices. And likewise here. So, I need to invent a name for a vertex that connects two edges, as opposed to a vertex that connects four edges, which is a crossing. So I will call such a thing a PIJ. So this will be PIJ PKL, and this will be a PIL PJK. Okay? So, the rule I want to apply, and let me go back to uh, the program. So, the rule I want to apply is, wherever you see an XP of 
I, J, K, L, but now I, J, K, and L are not specific, but uh, basically they are unknowns, and this underscore means an unknown named I, or an unknown named J, or an unknown named K. Uh, so whenever you see a thing like that, you replace it, and this funny notation means replace, by uh, a uh, to the sorry a times uh, p of uh, i j uh, p of uh, k l uh, uh, plus uh, a to the power negative one times p of uh, i l uh, P of J, K. Okay? So, uh, in principle, I should have written here what happens with X, M, but I will do, let, let's, at the moment, I just want to compute the trefoil. Later, I will make the program more universal. Okay? So, let's apply this rule, and uh, here's what we got. We got, um, well, we got every crossing got replaced by uh, the, the sum of the two smoothings, and each smoothing comes with a coefficient and is indicated with uh, two vertices. But, okay, the next thing I want to do is to, um, well, Really, there are eight smoothings to the crossing, crossings. And these eight smoothings, sorry, eight smoothings to the trefoil, because it has three crossings, and not with seven crossings, would have two to the seven smoothings. Right? So the trefoil has eight smoothings, and I want to, uh, and, and basically, the, and, and they are obtained by picking either the zero smoothing or the one smoothing in each of the choices here, in each of the possibilities. But if you think about it, that's exactly what the distributive law does. So, if I had converted this into a product and expanded it using the distributive law, I would get a sum of eight things, and those eight things are the eight crossings. So let me show you how it happens. So first of all, here is uh, times means multiplication. So if I replace inside in T1, if I replace the head of T1 from PD to times, then uh, you get a product of things. And now if I will expand this, so if I will expand uh, uh, the same thing, so times uh, replacing the head of T1, I get, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and hopefully there is another one uh, at the bottom. Well, there should be eight, eight terms here. Each term stands for a smoothing. Maybe we should try to interpret uh, one of them. So, for example, uh, how about uh, the one that comes with A cubed? So, this one. So can somebody write it down? A cubed, one, five, two, four, one, five, two, four, three, one, four, six, five, three, six, two. Did somebody write this down? Please. Okay, Jessica. So now let's go back to uh, the uh, other picture and try to understand what this smoothing uh, means. Okay? So, Jessica, can you uh, read it back to me? 
Uh, okay. Right, so it says like a cubed and then one five. So a cubed and then what? One five. One five. So I have an edge from one to five, yes? And then two four. Two four. So I have an edge from two to four. Uh, three one. Uh, three one. So I have an edge from three to one. Uh, four six. I have an edge from four to six. Yes. Uh, five three. Sorry, a vertex between four and six. All right. Five and three. So this is this. And then six two. Six two. So this is this. So. If you will look at the zero, zero, zero smoothing, it's, well, that's the picture you get here in blue. So I hope you can look at it at, at the screen share. So you get an, an inner cycle and an outer cycle. So two cycles, okay? Uh, so now let's go back to the program. And again, in a similar manner, each of the factors here is a smoothing. But now, uh, uh, here's the... Um, uh, oh, oh, wait, sorry. Uh, another thing even before, where is the mouse? Oh, this is terrible. I mean, the, the screen is so large that I cannot see the mouse. Yeah. What? Oh, I see it. Sorry, I should have called this uh, T2 for uh, temporary result number two. Okay, good. Now I want to do something clever. Uh, I want to um, uh, take T2 and repeatedly apply to it the rule that whenever you see a PIJ, uh, followed by a P, uh, sorry, a P, uh, J, K. So basically this is a, um, right, this is a, 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 an I connected to a J with a vertex and then J connected to a K with a vertex. But I only want to count cycles, so I may as well shortcut it and call it a PIK. So I want to convert this into a PIK. Uh, so what will I get? So basically every, uh, well, I got shorter cycles. But let's interpret these cycles. A P33 just means a cycle. You start at 3, you went through some sequence of things, and came back to 3. Likewise, a P14 means a single cycle. You went from 1 to 4, and then from 4 back to 1. So each PII or PIJ squared here means a single cycle. So, uh, had I named this, uh, oish, again I lost, the, I lost the, the mouse, so had I named this T3, uh, I could now simplify it further and write uh, and take T3 and every place that I see in it a P uh, I I I could replace it by uh, uh, D and D is just negative A to the power 2 ne um, negative A to the power negative 2 and likewise every place I see a P I J uh, squared, I can replace it by uh, the same quantity, so negative a uh, squared negative uh, 
a to the power negative 2. Sorry for writing the two powers in different formats, I'm running out of time. Uh, and uh, let's call this uh, T4. And this is the Kaufman bracket of the trefoil. If you want it in a simpler form, you can expand it. And here is the Kaufman bracket of the trefoil. So, uh, I'm out of time, but there are a few glitches in this, in this program and I went, it, I went through it too fast. Next time, I will um, spend an hour improving this, pro well, finishing this program, showing you why it's good, and then showing you why it's bad and how to make it better. But that will be next time. So, uh, and this will be on the web, this notebook. So see you uh, next uh, Wednesday. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, last week I had asked a question about in these polynomials, uh, what does multiplication encode and what does addition encode? Uh, is there time to answer that question now? Uh, well, Nothing. I mean, they're algebra. I don't know what to tell you. Sort of. Like, uh, did they encode any um, like, 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 which parts of the topology of the knot do they encode? Is there a nice way of dividing it up? So, um, let let me let, let me rephrase your question. You're really asking, what does the Jones polynomial mean? What does it measure? Okay? No. At the moment, nothing. At the moment, it's just an artificial construct, luckily very simple, that ends up being a not invariant, so you can use it to um, distinguish between various knots. Okay? Um, um, uh, we're not going to have a great meaning for the Jones polynomial, but it does have several not so great meanings, and we will go, we will get to them at some point, but 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 later, okay? Uh, so, but in a way, you know, if you're if you want Fields medals, then uh, that question, what does, what was the the Jones polynomial means, was asked by uh, Atia immediately after, so Atiyah himself has a Fields medal, immediately after Jones came up with the Jones polynomial and he posed it to Witten as a question as like, can you find a quantum field theory interpretation for it? And you know, that was one of the reasons why, why Witten got the Fields medal, because he did find an answer. But, you know, that comes later. Okay? But, but at the end you will be dissatisfied. Because at the end there isn't a, you know, here is what plus means in knot theory and here is what times means in knot theory. The meaning is not that every symbol gets an interpretation in knot theory, but only the overall thing or only, I mean, the interpretation is not quite a dictionary between algebra and knot theory. Okay. Um, okay, let's um, uh, meet again on... Sorry, can I ask another question? Sure. Um, well, maybe, I should say, maybe I should say that, uh, you know, class is somehow, somehow formally over because people should run to their other classes across campus. Uh, so, um, so, on the other hand, I'm, I always stay late after the class and chat with people until the next teacher knocks on the door and forces me out. So I'll stay until somebody will knock on my door and force me out. Yeah. Um, so back when we were doing the, we, we did the Jones sky relation. Yeah. We, I think we said that the Jones polynomial of K disjoint things was 
like some was like something something to like be to the power of K, but I think it should oh, it be, should be K the power minus of K one. minus one. It's K minus one. You're right. I for, okay. I I should have divided by an extra D. Right. So yeah, I will I will I will fix that. Uh, once this is on the web, it will be fixed. Okay. Other questions? Uh, I had a question just about um, Mathematica. Yeah. Um, I assume that we should be using getting in, getting us all familiar with Mathematica for this course. Not necessarily. So if you are, I, I mean, I really just want to demo that you can okay. implement things and it's and I'm doing it only once. It will not follow us in the class. The class is a math class. I've given okay. classes in which implementing was very, very significant. That's not the point right now. The point is I just want to demonstrate that you can do it and it's actually easy and you don't have to do it in mathematics. You in Mathematica you can do it in any other language. But I I I I somehow wanted to highlight the fact that we're not talking completely abstractly. Okay. Okay. Um, do you know if there's a way for us to get Mathematica as students? There is a student license and it's like $140 or something. Okay. Which is not unreasonable if you think about it. It's about the price of a textbook. And is or that like a, a thick lifetime textbook. subscription or is that just a year? No, it's not lifetime. It's for the duration that you are a student. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. Anything else? Okay. See you all. Uh, I, have, I have a question. Uh, sure. Um, wait, there's terrible knocking. Let me use my earphones. Yes. When looking at the stain relation, it, I got reminded of Morse theory. Uh, it looked as if we were passing, passing through a saddle uh, and smoothing the saddle in two different ways. And yeah. even the, 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 the stain relation for a single loop, it looks like we're passing through a local minimum or local maximum. Is there any connection? This seems to imply that maybe you can take link diagrams and stack them together into some kind of higher dimensional manifold? Uh, is there such a thing? Uh, similar things will occur when we will talk about Hovanov homology. So, so um, when you talk about Hovanov homology, uh, then again I lo lost the mouse, oh here it is. I, I need to learn how to, uh, uh, well, there's still stuff to learn about how to manage an online class for me. Anyway, uh, when, uh, uh, where was it? Uh, so basically, for us, uh, these two sides are uh, um, independent of each other. Uh, in Hovanov homology, the, coup, the key point is to link them, and you link them precisely by turning by turning them into a saddle. So you uh, so all of this is happening inside a circle. So you turn the circle into a cylinder, and you draw a saddle. Uh, it's a bit, sorry, my resolution is not quite good enough, but you draw a saddle inside the, the cylinder connecting the two um, smoothings, and that becomes the differential of Hovanov homology. But that comes later. Ooh, so, excellent question. Okay. So see you all um, next Wednesday. See you. I'm going to disconnect now. Bye.